Hi everyone, my name's Steve and this is Little Plastic People and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the dark arts of object source lighting or OSL for short. We're going to be taking a look at some blue green energy glow on a night that I'm currently trying to get finished for Salute. But as you'll see you can use this process and it can be applied to almost any subject. And as always this isn't intended to be a strict recipe but I will try and keep account of all the paints as we go. Anyway, with all of that said, let's get to the video. As mentioned, the subject of today's video is going to be a few parts for a night project that I'm currently working on, specifically some energy coils. Although I'm sure there are other approaches, I like to leave the OSL until the very last. So all the parts that I'll be working on have already been painted, decaled and weathered. Going back to add weathering, decals or repainting areas once the OSO is applied will be pretty tricky. So I make sure I'm happy enough with all of the parts before grabbing some bright white from the rack. Any good quality pure brilliant white will do here, particularly as I end up mixing it in equal parts with white ink and a drop of thinner before giving it a good mix with an old brush. I do this to create a mix that's a little thicker than ink on its own, but still with high pigment density and will also hopefully dry a little more hard wearing than just the ink on its own. I find that some inks do have the tendency to reactivate or tear when worked over, particularly if you're like me and too impatient to let them cure for long enough. Now that we have the paint and the subject, we can start blocking out all of the areas which are going to be emitting light, being careful to be as tidy as possible, although as you'll see we don't have to be perfect here. This stage is likely going to take a little time, particularly as you'll want to apply a few thin coats to build up that solid white. Going too thick too fast with white can lead to a really chalky and textured surface, which isn't what we're looking for. We want a nice smooth coat, so take your time. Once we've got the white areas blocked out nicely, ensuring all the areas that we want to emit light are covered. With that done, it's time to apply the first level of the glow effect. We do this pretty simply by using the airbrush to cover the white areas in a very light coat, allowing for a little overspray onto the areas where the light would fall. But don't go too heavy, at this stage we want to keep things pretty subtle. And yes I know, not another airbrush tutorial, but don't worry this effect can be achieved with glazing, dry brushing, sponging or a combo of all three. Hell you could probably even use your finger. But. I use the airbrush here as it's faster and easier to achieve a nice smooth transition. We'll be using our traditional brush a lot shortly, so hold on and don't leave just yet. To stop the airbrush spraying past where I think the light would hit, I've used a little masking tape to roughly cover the area. As you can see, this doesn't look like much so far, but don't worry, that'll change shortly. Next up is the base colour for our glow. Here I'm using a thematic blue from GW mainly so that this night matches all of my others. But it's also a really nice colour and paint to use for this technique, due to its ink-like qualities. With that said, you can use almost any colour for OSL, although some thought should be given to the colour of the surrounding surfaces, as, for example, green light on green armour will require a little more thought to sell the effect. I also find that bright and fluorescent colours tend to be easier. Contrast style paints and inks are also pretty useful here, as they thin nicely without breaking down and still stay relatively vibrant. So I give the white areas a thinned coat of athematic blue, focusing on the coil centres and allowing it to overspray a little, just to reinforce that initial cast light glow. After a few more passes to build up the colour, leaving time in between each coat to avoid pooling and staining, again focusing on the centre of the coils, leaving the areas where the coils meet the edges bright white. Going back to the airbrush, I use some of the white from before and fire it into the deepest recesses, just to reinforce some of those brightest spots. I go back with the brush and some of that white with some extra flow improver, just to make those recesses extra bright. To help the white seek and stay in those recesses, I dampen the surface with a little flow improver before adding the white. This lowers the surface tension and stops the white from marking anything but the deepest of recesses. But it's still a good idea to be as accurate as possible. At every stage we're looking to reinforce and increase the colour and brightness contrast between the pure white recesses and the other higher, cooler surfaces. This stark contrast is what really sells the effect towards the end. Here's an example of what we're aiming for. Lots of contrast, not just from dark to light, but also in colour. So with that in mind I go back to the athematic blue, this time straight from the pot, using the edge of my brush to catch the raised coils. 
just darkening them down gradually with a few glaze coats. Not being overly precious, but trying to keep the transitions relatively smooth. Once this is complete and dry, you'll already have something that passes as a relatively believable glow. You could stop here and go about your day, but I really want to push the contrast as far as possible. So I grab some fluorescent green from the rack and mix it with some flow improver, water and gloss varnish. You could keep this simple and mix it with just water, but my aim here is to create a mix that goes nicely through the airbrush, glazes well without tearing up too much when worked over, as I find that fluorescents are particularly delicate and prone to gumming the airbrush. With this concoction nicely mixed, I glaze the brightest white areas of the coils, trying not to tint the rest too much with any of the overspray. The solid white of the recesses that we've established before really helps the fluorescent green pop, and the green itself adds another level of color interest. Once this is completely dry, I go back in with some athematic blue, just to darken the coil tops down again, smoothing out the transition into the green. Now it's back to the flow improved white, to brighten up those very deepest recesses again. And using a little of the athematic blue through the airbrush to darken and tint the very center of the coils, this gets reinforced with the brush on the very highest of each coil edge. Again, this is all with the aim of increasing contrast between the lightest and darkest areas. Like before, you could stop here as it's definitely reading as a powerful energy source emitting lots of light. But I still think we have loads of space to increase that contrast and really sell the effect even further. So it's out with some dark translucent blues, specifically pterodon turquoise from GW and transparent turquoise from Warcolors. With a little water to thin, I use the transparent turquoise and the side of my brush to darken the coil edges towards the centers, leaving the white, the green and some of the athematic blue from before showing at the edges. Working in thin glazes, I gradually build up the color close to full saturation, but remembering to reduce the area each layer covers, as we're aiming to reduce the size and coverage of each darker stage. I now apply the pterodon turquoise in the same way, leaving some of the transparent turquoise from before visible. Still feeling like we're not quite there, I bring down some dark, saturated, inky purples from the rack. In this case, it's Luxion Purple from GW and Violet Ink from Vallejo. And just as before, I use these carefully and gradually to darken the highest coil edges. We're getting pretty close now, and to really ensure we've gone full contrast, I grab some black legion and darken the tiniest center edge of each coil, using a few thin coats to keep the transitions relatively smooth. Almost finally, I go back and tidy up some of the recesses, using a mix of white, turquoise and fluorescent green with pure white for the brightest points. Now with this applied to all of the glowing parts, we can get to the very final stage which of course is fully optional, but if you've seen any of my work recently, should be very expected. So using some ultra matte from AK, I give everything a quick coat just to knock back some of that shine, giving everything a nice consistent finish. Now you could go back and cover the coils with some gloss varnish, but I like the matte finish, so it's staying. And there we have it, OSL to really make your minis glow. To sell the effect even further, you may want to use some of the fluorescent green or the initial athematic blue just to tint some of the immediate surrounding areas where the light would touch. But do be careful, as this needs to be applied very subtly. Going too heavy will likely spoil the effect, but I'm not going to do that here as all of these weapon options are interchangeable and not all of them glow. But you can see on some of these other examples that it can really take the effect much further. This is where an airbrush can really help, as spraying from the direction of the light source can provide some pretty convincing results. But the same results could be achieved with a brush or a sponge or any combo of the above. Anyways, let me know in the comments if this is something you've already tried or something that you'd like to, and let me know how you got on. Until next time, thanks for watching, bye!